free one for you. That's the Brad. Well, actually, I'm going to intercept. It's 738, everybody. we got to stay on the uh, room reset. So, sorry, Brad. Intercepted. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome. If you're just joining us, this is the Get Up and Grow Club. Of course, this is the Achievers Breakfast Table here, and uh, that when we're here Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 8:30 Eastern Standard Time, and every single time we're here, we're talking about success. That's right, success in every aspect of your life. Uh, and today's no different. We we're talking about the power of example because examples is how we learn, right? I mean, that's that's. Hopefully, we're, we're looking and learning from other people's examples so we're not paying that dumb tax so we can take those shortcuts so we can uh, do what we need to do a little bit more effectively, efficiently, more uh, with a little uh, more efficiency and not as painful, avoid some of that that dumb tax, right? Uh, so that's what we're here doing every time we're here. We're here from 7 to 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and we encourage you to invite other people into this room because... Uh, we can make a huge difference in somebody's life, their business, their relationship, just by having them get a different perception, get a different example, uh, get some tips and strategies on on how to perhaps handle whatever situation they may be going through, how to overcome, how to deal with, how to communicate, and we can change somebody's life. We can change their, their business. We can change everything. And by the way, every single day that we're here, Every single day that you wake up is another opportunity to, to, to be an example um, and to learn and to do something different, right? So that's why we're here, and we talk, and we discuss different things, exchange different ideas, and everyone you meet knows something you don't. So let's bring some more people into this conversation, whether they're here just to, to, to listen and learn or whether they're here to share. So with that said, thank you, my friends. And by the way, uh, on to Brad Corn. Good morning, Brad. Good morning, breakfast buddies. So yeah, I'm kind of, you know, putting my thoughts around this and I come up with, uh, you know, what type of person or what type of leader do you want to be? Do you want to be a leader of power or do you want to be a leader of influence? And how will that choice affect the results that you're getting? And I don't want to just leave it in just business talk today, even though I'll give an example of that. I mean, when you're setting when you're leading people, are you leading your business organization or are you leading an organization at your church? Are you leading an organization or, or involved in a charity that you're passionate about? And if you're passionate about it, do you want people, do you want to influence people to help grow this charity or do you want to use power, right? What about family? I mean, that was, I, 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 that hit me like just the influence or the example that we're leaving not only for our kids, I mean, what about our nephews and nieces? <clears throat> what about our grandchildren? Um, so what type of leader are you setting? So now I'm going to kind of pull it back to business, but you can relate this to any of those, th that group of people, whether it's family, organizations, your business, whatever. And when you start, I've talked about this level that you grow your business through. And typically we start out as a solopreneur, right? We're, we're one person creating our, our dream, our vision, our mission, and what we're going to provide. And we're setting the standards. And there's something about our passion that shows up in all that stuff. There's the, the pure, purest form of that example is you are setting the standard that makes you awesome. Why people do business with you or why people would use your company for stuff, right? And the next step is it's you and an admin person. So you're, you're kind of getting busy now. People are seeing this. They're following you. They want your product service. They want you, whatever it might be. So you add your admin person, and that's supposed to relieve some of that 80% stuff that generates 20% of the results. So you can focus more on your 20% that generates 80% of the results and or 20% so you can generate 80% more exposure and help more people with whatever you're passionate about, right? And then the next step is you're bringing in you, you got your admin. Now you're going to split that admin job up because they got to be super busy by the time you've made them busier, right? And you're creating systems along the way. Uh, and now you got a marketing person in there to even grow the company more, but you're still focused on the boots on the ground, setting the standard for what the experience is for anybody that comes into your world to have your product, service, whatever it might be, right? And then you're going to go to your sales team after that. 
that's where you can start leveraging some of that stuff out. So when I think about this, you know, you you've done it. You've done it from the very beginning and you set the standards of what you expected. So when we talk about power of example, I look at just my own personal real estate business and something as simple as a call coming into the office, right? So if a call comes into the office and we say, we want that phone answered by the second ring, it never rings a third time. If that becomes your business standard, right? I've seen somebody's business card that said once, you know, I return calls in 10 minutes. Okay, I don't even remember one time I got a call back from that person in 10 minutes, <laughs> right? So, but it's like, if we, we do not want the phone to ring a third time because they're just, a you know, if they're just calling about a property, they'll just hang up and call the next realtor. So I had to answer the phone by the second ring every single time. You could never see me sitting at my desk and hear a third ring because then it just it just blows everything about that standard out of the water. And why did we even create it? Well, there was a reason why we created it, right? Another one was it, it, addresses are important to me. Now, this may sound a little crazy for all my realtor friends that are on the phone, but can you believe that real estate agents sell real estate, which is an address on this in, in this world, right? And yet you could look at their list, their database, and you know, probably 80% of that database doesn't have addresses with it. Okay, what? We sell real estate and we don't have their address? We have their email? I mean, come on. We sell, ad we sell houses. We sell real estate. Shouldn't it be a list of addresses? Anyway. So my big important thing is getting an address every single time. And if you follow this room and you've heard me speak, you know that address is imp important to me because I can't really connect our relationship and tell you how I really feel about this first meeting. If I can't just send you a simple handwritten note that just says it was, I mean, seriously, it was awesome connecting. I am looking forward to keeping in touch. And now I've got you and we can stay in communication, right? So I'll have people answer the phone and, and my buyer's agent will not get the address. It's like, well, he didn't really want to give me his address. I'm like, really? And I'll pick up the phone. She just hang, hung up with a stranger. I pick up the phone. I dial the number back and I go, hey, you were just talking to my, my, uh, my partner, Wendy, and uh, sounds like you're wanting to invest in real estate. Yeah, I talked to him for like 30 seconds. And next thing you know, she sees me writing down his address. It's like, so it's you. do you use the scripts yourself? And not just scripts, anything that you do to get results. Is it getting the results that you would expect your employees to get or the people that work with you to get? So I got to pick up the phone. I got to get that address right in front of them and said, all I did was say this that's on this piece of paper sitting on your desk. And it works. And they saw how I did it. And they, they always say, uh, you make that look too easy. So I love what Bridget brought up earlier, and I'll kind of pull this to a close, but Bridget brought up earlier about that challenge with some of the leadership. And I, by all means, I am not uh, telling you this is the situation for all of them. But when you look at that, if somebody's wanting people to get into the office, was that leader in the office every day? Were they locked up in their office so nobody ever sees them, so they don't even know if they're there or not? Do they show up late? Do they leave for golf all the time? That kind of stuff. If you want somebody in the office, are you in the office every day? And are you in the office making sure they see you in the office every day, right? And, and that's going to get that example coming back. So I'll just leave you with this. Our, are you leading by power or are you leading by influence? Because when we when they see our examples happening, that's going to influence them to, well, he does it so I can do it. So that's my share for this morning. Boom. That was awesome stuff. Oh, Brad. Planet Brad is a great place to be. Doesn't everybody agree? They always have these great tips. And I do um, love the uh, nod to power through influence versus power through authority. And I'm going to pass the mic right on to you.